Hello and good evening. Um, the top of the evening to you all, misquoting uh, the late Sir David Frost. Is anyone there? Hello, Laura. Good evening to you. You're the first to arrive. Um, I don't know if anyone else is going to be joining us. It could just be you, me and Marcia. And Alexis. Hello, Alexis. Lovely to hear from you and the lovely Paulie. Yes, Emily and Holly and Nina and Sharon and Bradley and Melissa and Alana and Mother Duck and all the rest of you. You're coming in thick and fast. So there's an awful lot to go through this evening. I have made an awful lot of notes. Um, lots going on here. I don't know how to stop the noise, so please don't ask. I don't have a clue how to deal with that. So there we are. Anyway, um, thank you very much, and I hope you've all had a wonderful Sunday and glorious Sunday lunches. Hello to Cape Town and um, lots of other places. Uh, um, the... Uh, I've had a lovely dinner in my garden courtyard with my neighbour, and uh, it's been absolutely delightful. So um, here I am, ready to talk to you about various matters. I don't know if you've seen my list of topics, but um, they include Lucy Letby and the people who are apologists for her. I've never been so shocked at having read the things I did. Um, truly awful things written. Um, the sinking of a gin, gin palace in um, boat in Australia, but the fact that the Guardian and the Sydney Herald got the wrong name, and the wrong name of the wrong boat, and the wrong name of the wrong owner. And, you know, even big newspapers get things very wrong and upset a lot of very rich people in the process about which boat has been sunk. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the BBC series that I've been watching, The, the Woman in the Wall, which I urge you all to watch. Um, we'll be talking about the beavers and how DEFRA are doing very little to help the beavers that are going to do great things for the rewilding of Britain. And I'm going to continue banging on about rewilding as long as I want, because I love the concept of reintroducing nature to this country and getting our country back into order. And then we're going to have a bit of fun with the Wagatha Christie case because Rebecca Vardy's been back at it again. She's getting into trouble again, and that woman simply cannot help putting her foot back in Davy Jones's locker, which she didn't even know what it was. Um, the silly woman is the prime example of the most stupid wag on the planet. Um, absolutely unhinged woman. Anyway, there's 156 of you here. And no, I cannot stop the noise. I'm very sorry you don't like the noise, but I've no idea how to stop it. Um, I've quit all my social media channels. Um, they're all turned off. My e email is turned off. And my telephone is also going to be turned off right now. So um, you won't be able to ring in, for example. Um, but I don't know how to deal with things like that. I am technically inept. I'm the first to admit it. Um, there's no point in me trying to claim otherwise. But anyway, cheers to you all with a glass of wine. I enjoyed talking about the gin yesterday. So I cannot turn off my notification noises because I do not know how that works. Please don't ask me again because I can't do anything about it. I have to wait for my technical person to be available and he is not available for two weeks. So there we go. Anyway, I don't know people who are into technical things. Most people I know are into books. Um, right. The, the mother and daughter's murderers from TikTok. Um, I don't know about them, but um, please send more information. Um, uh, if you wish to send information, my email address for our publication is editorial at the steeple We welcome messages, or you can contact me on Twitter at m underscore steeples or at steeple times. Um, you're welcome to contact me in any of those ways. Or if you wish to send correspondence, um, please send to the Magnet, which is a pub in Broadstairs in Kent. You'll find the address on Google. And um, I give a huge shout out to the Magnet, which has had lovely music I hear this weekend. 
I've had a weekend of quiet and peace and reflection and done some very boring chores and things like that. So I haven't been there, but um, we all love the magnet and I get lots of wonderful opinions from them. Great place. So anyway, I think it is time to begin with the first topic of the evening. Um, now, which will it be? Um, well, I think I should begin by talking about this is a recommendation for a program you should watch. If you can get on the BBC iPlayer, um, depends where you are in the world and whether you have access accessibility to it. Um, I recommend a program called The Woman in the Wall, and I watched the first two episodes myself last night after this program. Um, it's a six-part series. Um, the first two parts have aired. The third part, I believe, is airing right now. Um, the rest you can only watch later. It stars Ruth Wilson, who was in played Jane Eyre, and uh, in Lufa as well, and a man called Daryl McCormick, who was in Peaky Blinders, or Peaky Blinders, depending on how you pronounce it. Because um, I know people do say it different ways, just like they say potato and they say potato and they say tomato and tomato, tomato. You know, let's call the whole thing off. Anyway, it's all about the Magdalene laundries. Um, it's a drama, but it's a dark mystery drama, and it is based on, you know, the horrible Magdalene laundries, which were Roman Catholic institutions, the fallen women that operated from the 18th to the 20th century. Now, most people watching it will just think it's some kind of drama, but there is a lot of truth in this story. Um, it's a chaotic drama. There are many questions in it. You know, the women are a bit wild and the lots of strange things going on and lots of sleepwalking by the main protagonist. Um, it's gripping, but it, it features the haunted past of both Lorna, the, the, the lady played by um, Ruth Wilson, who has been in a Magdalene laundry and had her child taken away, and also the police detective Coleman Akande, who himself was brought up in a similar thing, and it, they're linked together by the priest that has interacted with them both, and the priest has been murdered. But I won't tell you any more of the story, because then you can enjoy it for yourselves. But... Um, these laundries, in reality, operated on a not-for-profit basis. And as Paulie says, the nuns were brutal. Um, the women who were taken in, the ch children and women, they received no pay, no education. The average age of the inmates, I discovered, was 23. But the youngest was just nine. These people were made to work 16-hour days for nothing, and they were treated abysmally and evilly by these, these brutal women nuns who were appalling. It was a shameful thing. There were over 30,000 women imprisoned in these laundries and made to work in conditions beyond appalling. They were kept in within locked doors. They had a rule of silence. They weren't allowed to speak. They, they, were, they were very limited in their familial visits. They were allowed. Um, and when they were having family visit, they were monitored by the nuns. So they weren't able to tell their own families of the brutality they suffered. This is disgusting and appalling. The punishments were meant to be cruel and evil. Um, and an example of the appallingness of them was revealed in 1993 when a developer bought um, some property that they'd operated from in Dublin. Um, and they discovered a mass grave of 155 women who hadn't been declared when the Sisters of Our Lady of, uh, of Charity sold a former laundry. You know, these... These Sisters of Our Lady of Charity were, were very mean people, clearly. They hadn't been declared. That's 155 people who were effectively cancelled by women who should have been good Christians. And they were not good Christians. And they separated these poor people from their children. 
um, in a brutal, terrible fashion. Isn't that absolutely awful? Um, in 2013, the Taoiseach, i.e. the Premier of Ireland, Edna Kennedy, formally apologised for the nation's shame. Um, but I don't think that's enough, given 30,000 people, 30,000 women, were made to be imprisoned in this. That's not enough of an apology. Okay, we don't, we can't make up for everything that happened in history, but many of these people are still living. Um, this whole story was again highlighted in the film Philomena, which was, uh, Judy Dench was the star in 2013. I urge you to watch it. I've watched that film in the past. It's an excellent film, and it's so sad about how, you know, this, this lady is taken away, her son is taken away from her. And, you know, that is awful. Um, you know, one person here is saying they sent their laundry to one of those laundries in the 70s. They didn't realize it was going on. No, and it, it's not just the Roman Catholic Church. I do not attack the Roman Catholic Church. I'm not, a, I'm not religious. I was brought up within, you know, the Church of England. Um, and, um, you know, I, I went to Church of England schools. Um, weirdly, at my school, we did have a, a an Orthodox priest because he converted because he didn't like women priests, which I found rather odd. Um, but I'm not religious. Um, I believe in God. I just don't believe in the ceremony. But, you know, we don't need to go into that. But all churches have abuse within it. Um, many organizations have abuse. You know, it's not just about the Roman Catholic Church, though I think that the film Spotlight highlighted the way the abuse in, in the church in America, in the Roman Catholic Church there. You know, Scientology, um, cults, it's, it goes on here, there, and everywhere. But, you know, this film Philomena did really bring it to light. And now I think that this film, the woman, this drama, The Woman and the Wall, is doing that. And I think it's it's about time more people woke up and smelled the coffee of that, isn't it, really? Um, you know, Sinead O'Connor was also put into one of these... Um, these uh, Magdalene laundries, and she was age fourteen when it did when she was put there. You know, the impact on her life was obviously appalling. She said, "We were all told we were bad people." Now, I urge you to watch this program. It is it is worth your time. I spent two hours watching it after I did this last night, and um, I was kind of addicted to it. So I should be watching the next episode tonight. And I just wish I could watch the rest. I, I would watch it all in one hit because I think it's a very interesting take on the situation of the dreadful abuse of people and that there is so much abuse that goes on. You know, the gangs in um, in places like Blackburn and Burnley, they're just as bad. You know, they're, they're grooming gangs terrible things. So I'm not attacking any individual church here or any individual religion or any individual element of society. It all goes on. Um, it's terrible. Um, but Sinead O'Connor, yes, she was involved in one of these laundries. Um, it's absolutely appalling. So there we go. So that's that covered. Um, so next, I'll give you something a bit more cheerful for a Sunday. Um, some of you liked me giving you a book recommendation. Um, I had a guest staying here recently, and they um, they wouldn't the, the one book they wouldn't put down is an old book that I had here. Um, it's called The World According to Clarkson. It's by Jeremy Clarkson, of course, and uh, this book was published in. Um, 2004, but it was, it's, it features articles written between 2001 and 2003. Um, and it's, it's a very enjoyable, enjoyable thing about looking back at, you know, we're talking 20 years on since, you know, it, it, it was brought up, um, brought out. And uh, I think, you know, whether you like or loathe Jeremy Clarkson, he adds a bit of fun to the world. And I think his, his farm program, I've never seen it, but I'm told everyone enjoys it. Um, I think many people would enjoy his 
his take on the world. And, you know, the man has had a, an epic career. And uh, there you go. It's on your bookcase, funnily enough, Paulie. Well, anyway, I, I, go on eBay and get yourself a copy. It's published by Penguin. It's just a bit of fun. Um, if you don't want to read it, you don't have to. You have the right not to read it. Um, I like Jeremy Clarkson's style. Um, I don't agree with him on many things. You know, he he and I would certainly not agree about things like Brexit. Um, but I think he's great fun and he enjoys a drink. And, you know, he's been doing good things for the farming community. He's been doing good things for people who like a boot, bit of booze. Um, good for him. He called out Meghan Markle. He maybe went a bit too far on that. But, um, you know, Jeremy Clarkson is not a bad man in my view. He likes a good car. I I have to say, I think that my guests were quite rightly enjoyed us. We just picked it up in the local, the local, um, the local bar, which is called the Chapel, which is also a bookshop. Um, um, it's a 13th century chapel that operates as a bar and a bookshop. So you can go in there. And they've got about 30,000 books, and you can buy a drink and buy a book. So I like that kind of place. And there should be more places of that type in the world. The Wonderful Magnet have a bookshelf where you can take your own books in and donate them if you so wish, or you can pick up a book. And I think that's a wonderful thing. And these um, telephone boxes that have been turned into um, uh, community book, book libraries um, they're fantastic, and you know some of them. Some people put things in there. Someone put um, Fifty Shades of Grey in one recently, and all the locals went mad. Um, I think they're overreacting. They should stop being so prudish. You know, they, they would have probably said the same of Lady Chatterley's Lover fifty years ago. But anyway, I think you know as long as people enjoy things, good enough, wonderful. You know, if they put Katie Price's book there, that might be a bit more disappointing, but. She's in court on the 14th of September, and I may well be attending. Um, we look forward to seeing what goes on there. Um, my correspondent, who keeps writing to me, is very keen that we all attend on the 14th of September because she refers to her as the skank. And um, she seems to know an awful lot about this case, and Miss, Miss uh, Pricey um, should not be traveling the world and should perhaps focus on other matters. But there we go. So we'll move along to another topic. Um, the next topic I shall cover is a quick one, and that is about the beavers. So we've talked regularly here about the beavers and how beavers are being re reintroduced to Britain. And um, two people I know, um, Sir Benjamin Slade, who's a landowner in, the, in Somerset, and um, another, Ben Goldsmith, who also owns farms. They're both very keen on the rewilding. And the beavers are back. And today, the Observer wrote about this. Now, this article was written by um, Robbie Mackey, their science editor. And he said, the beavers are back, but scientists fear DEFRA's silence on the protection deal. Now, beavers add to the biodiversity of this country. They build dams, they do wonderful things, and they help the land flood naturally, which encourages wildlife. And this is a way of restoring our landscapes. So it clears up our polluted waterways. It helps other species like the water vole. And the water vole was in decline in this country, but now it's coming back. It's about time. You know, the beavers were hunted to extinction 400 years ago in Britain. They were hunted for their fur, their glands, and their meat. They've now been reintroduced. Um, there's hundreds of them living across the UK, building dams, mostly in England and Wales, also in Scotland. Um, but we've lost 75% of our wetlands in this country. This is a wonderful thing to bring them back. Now, the government said that they would help. Where is our government? Come on, Rishi Sunak, do something decent. Um, you know, on the on the river, the rivers in Devon, 
Yes, you're talking about otters here. Yes, otters as well. We need more otters. Great things. Um, it is time that we we did more to help them. But as is pointed out in this article, um, the environment. Um, It was all looking good. The trouble is that since the government, have, uh, we've heard nothing from the government, said um, a man called Holden. And Mr. Holden is a professor, is, a, is, is someone who's helping introduce them. We have agreed that there are real benefits in releasing the beavers in widespread but controlled ways across England, but we cannot actually carry that out. Deborah has made it clear on the website it's not allowed. It's very disappointing. Um, Bob Ward of um, the London School of Economics, which is where I studied, said there is a clear need to bring back the beaver to Britain to help us manage the growing impacts of climate change, such as flooding, droughts and wildfires. Unfortunately, the Environment Secretary is delaying the decision on allowing their licence released into the wild. Indeed, she even seems to be considering a potentially disastrous removal of be beaver's protected status which will therefore allow hunters to kill them, a further sign that the government is weak on environmental issues. In Holden adds, in 2021, Natural England suggested that a favourable population status for beavers would be around 5,200 family groups. We are miles away from achieving this. DEFRA don't appear to have a clear strategy as preventing us from realising the significant benefits that beavers could bring to nature and society. A spokesman for DEFRA responded, we're continuing to work with Natural England to develop our approach to the reintroduction of the beaver in England. Well, this is not good enough. Come on, Rishi Sunak, man up, show up and grow up and do something about it. It's about time. You did something to help these people, these beavers. This is to help communities because this will do good for all of us because the more biodiversity we have in this country, the better. And we need to bring back red squirrels and encourage those as well. They are limited because of the grey squirrel, which is an invasive species brought from Australia. And that was, uh, well, from Canada, sorry, that the, 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 that was a big problem. And the grey squirrel have been um, a nuisance to the red squirrel. The red squirrel is native. Um, and um, yes, it's absolutely shocking Evola would like to bring back the Cockney. Well, there's plenty of Cockneys still left. Um, they're wonderful people. I had lots of friends in the East End of London, and some of them were born within the Bow Bells, but you can't hear those anymore because they've built too many towers in the way, so the echo is killing them off. Um, the, the, the distance of which the Bow Bells can be heard, that is. Um, the government is so short-sighted. Yes, I totally agree. Um, <laughs> We're now on to pearly kings and pearly queens. Well, I'm focused on the beaver for the minute, but um, there we go. You're 54 and you've never seen a red squirrel. I'm sorry to hear that, Nicola. There are red squirrels in the Nottinghamshire area, I believe. There are red squirrels around a place called Forres in Scotland near Inverness. Um, there are red squirrels in North Humberland, uh, the last time I looked. Um, I'm told that they might be on this Mercia Island as well, I'm told, but I don't know about that. That comes from somebody who's just written in. We will see. You've got on Brown Sea Island in Dorset, there are red squirrels. Um, and in Ireland, you have lots of red squirrels, right? Well, there we go. So I think we should all support the campaigns to bring back the red squirrels. So, and also the beaver, support the beaver. Yes. So. I urge you all to get behind campaigns to support biodiversity. Read as many much stuff as you can about rewilding. There's some great books out there. I've referenced some of them before. Very wonderful things. Um, the Isle of Wight. Well, they are spreading. Well, that's good. Well, the more we can get. You found them in Glencoe. Well, better than other things that went on in Glencoe. Um Prince Charles hands feeds them. Well, I'm not sure if he does, but uh, I hope he does. Anyway, right. Well, we'll move on to a, another topic. 
Um, I suppose we should go to the serious topic of the evening now, which is Lucy Letby. Now, somebody yesterday decided to send me a video, and I'm not going to name where this the person who made this video, but I was appalled by it. It made me very upset. So I would like to talk about it, but I will not be naming the person that made it or where it is shown because I don't want to encourage people to watch it because it is utterly reprehensible what these, this person has said. And there are many of them I've discovered since out there who are attacking the innocent victims, the babies murdered by Lucy Letby and the poor families of those victims and I believe, like Dr. Harold Shipman, there are probably many more victims of this evil, manipulative, sick-in-the-head, revolting woman who killed children. Now, this is utterly disgusting and wrong that this, this woman has now got a bunch of sick groupies supporting her. And these people are beyond deranged. I have never, ever come across, uh, wasted an hour of my life listening to such drivel, but I'm going to share some of it with you so you don't have to actually listen to it. Now, there will be an inquiry into Lucy Letby, and, you know, there's been plenty of analysis already about her familial state, her parents who have stood by her, her friends who stood by her and you know how ordinary she was and all of these excuses that are made and you know they tried to normalize her in some circles by saying you know they're just an ordinary family and that this doesn't make sense but these people who are out there making these videos should be stopped because there are families who are suffering and they are really suffering because they have had children who will never grow up. Some of them may never have other children. So they, therefore, they'll never have grandchildren. Some of those children had brothers and sisters. They will never get to experience the good times with their brothers and sisters. Some of them had grandparents. Many of them had grandparents. They will never get to, to spend time with their grandchildren. This has impacted on so many people. What about the people she worked with? What about... All the others that have suffered because of this evil, sick woman. And thank God that, you know, she she was convicted of the murder of at least seven infants, at least. And the attempted murder of at least six others. And I hope she's brought to trial for more because from what I gather, you know, there's plenty of other evidence. Of the, in the time since, people have come forward and said, well, what about uh, our child would suffered and... This is, you know, this is why this, it's good that this was all put in the public domain. And the cowardly Lucy Letby wouldn't even come and face the victims in court. And thank God the government are actually going to possibly do something good. Now, they need to get on and do it. Um, we won't accept what they did until they do it. But these people should be dragged, kicking and screaming into the courtroom whether they like it or not, at sentencing to face those victims. It's a stupid law. Now, it's quite correct that she wasn't dragged into the court because the law is not in place to do that. So at the moment, as it stands, that's fair enough. But people in the future of this type should be made to appear. And I support having cameras in the courtroom. And there are cases where they do have it and there were at sentencing sky news very sensitively covered the sentencing because they um they they obviously leaked out bits where the names of the families were involved because these people don't want to be named now that bit should be kept out of it but lucy letby should be named and shamed and people like her and in the future lucy letby's and sadly whether we like it or not, there will be people of this type because, you know, go back 100 years, there were people doing things of this type.
and I'll come to other cases in a moment, you know, my own personal experience of people I've encountered who support such people. Um, you know, I, I spent time um, when I was younger, um, I went to a, a, a dinner party um, and there was a lady sat next to me and she had been the secretary of Lord Longford. I have never encountered such a deranged woman in my entire life. She tried to explain to me why Myra Hindley was an innocent, wonderful woman. I subsequently encountered her at a, a place called the Chelsea Arts Club in, in uh, London and also. And this woman went on and on and on and on about that. And I just said, you know, what about those poor victims? Oh, Myra was lovely. I've met other ones who have told me Dennis Nielsen was a lovely gentleman, a kindly man. There are people who get carried away in believing. I had one that said John Christie was an innocent man. I've talked about that one before. You can read his book, but I don't urge you to. Um, it's a shocking state of affairs that this Lucy Letby is now being treated in a similar fashion, and she is being lauded by these people on the internet, and they're going, Lucy Letby is innocent. So this particular person begins by saying, I'm saying that the case seems rather odd, and the behavior doesn't suggest she's guilty. Now, I'm not agreeing with any of this. This is me criticizing it. He compares it to the Lucia de Burke case, which was some similar situation. And other people out there are referencing the nurse, um, the, the nanny, Louise Woodward. Um, he goes on, the media are lazy. They didn't bother to investigate. They just read the news off Twitter. And then, of course, he brings in the lockdowns. He's one of these um, lockdown people. He compares the murder of, murder of innocent babies to the lockdowns and claims it's fake. He thinks the confession notes were staged. He claims the only evidence of depression of this Lucy Letby came after she was arrested. Is that surprising, he asks. He said she refused to attend her sentencing. Why should she? I do not think I would go, regardless if I was innocent or guilty. This man is, is just absolutely shocking. Um, he said it. Her looking up the patients' families on, on the patients, the victims' families on Facebook. He said it seems perfectly reasonable for a nurse or doctor to be interested in how people are getting on. They are deranged. These people. He compares the case with the um, the man cleared also in Greater Manchester area, Andrew Malkinson, and I say that is ludicrous. Um, he says, nothing in her profile fits that of a serial killer, not acting like a killer. And I discussed this the other day. Most female serial killers come from um, nursing hospital type backgrounds. They are, that has been the case in history. There have been a lot of incidents, not many incidents, but, you know, but of the incidents of female serial killers. And she is a serial killer because she's murdered at least seven and tried to kill another six that we know of and probably killed many more because she's a very wicked, evil woman. Um, but most of those people have um, issues. So she was obsessed with teddy bears. Now, there's all sorts of people obsessed with teddy bears, but um, it's a substitute for having her, her, her lack of having children. She talked about not being able to have children. She talked about how she was smothered by her parents. She was forced to go on holiday. She couldn't move away from them. She didn't think she'd be able, ever be able to have relationships, all the rest of it. Poor, poor her. The violins play. It didn't mean she needed to go out and start killing other people's children. It's disgusting, and she shouldn't have become a nurse in the first place because clearly she was unhinged and unsuitable. <coughs> Um, Prince Andrew loves teddy bears. Yes, there you go. Um, I wasn't going to say it, but, you know, so does Fergie. So did Princess Diana, the late Diana, Princess of Wales. These people all were obsessed with teddy bears. That doesn't mean that they're serial killers. Um, but, you know, this is a, a very strange situation. 
Um, and not said Jimmy Savile, he loved teddy bears as well. Lots of bizarre people with weird warped minds love teddy bears. Now, nothing that doesn't mean that teddy bears are bad things. There are lots of people who love teddy bears who are perfectly in are perfectly innocent and kindly. But this this man um makes out this woman to be perfectly normal, perfectly decent. Um, but there we are. The evidence, he says, does not seem to exist. It's all circumstantial. There doesn't seem to be any evidence of murder. He tries to make out that these children just died by natural causes. And this is totally sick. And I am, I, I've wasted an hour of my life listening to this. And you won't have to. Um, I think she's definitely getting these super fans. And he admits that repeating third parties without understanding fully. I'd question if there's any evidence of murder. She didn't destroy her notes, he goes on. She was guilt. If she was guilty, she would have destroyed her notes. She wouldn't have even made them in the first place. Well, people who, who commit crimes like to keep mementos. That's what happens. You know, many of these killers, like, for example, um, Dennis Nielsen, they kept bits of things belonging to these people. That was how these people could be identified. Serial killers tend to keep something from their victims because they want to maintain the contact with their victims because that's why they, they're lacking in company and they lack in empathy and they're narcissists. And this stupid man, you know, he said quite rightly, he said, I don't think the police are even doing some of the th doing things that someone thick like me would do. Well, he's admitted he's very stupid, and he is very stupid, because what he's doing is piling misery upon misery on the poor parents of seven murdered infants and six further infants he tried to murder. That's, that's, a, lot of ch that's, that's, that's a lot of children. And then there's all the rest, which she, she could have done, and there will be further inquiry into her. And I guarantee you, like Harold Shipman, who murdered hundreds of people, um, there will be plenty more. Harold Shipman was a doctor who liked to kill hundreds of pensioners. And he only got caught because he got greedy by trying to forge the will. Dennis Nielsen only got caught, really, because everyone saves, because of, you know he put things down the drain and rent kill had to come and clean the drains. But no, it was because an American family, he targeted homeless people, and then he targeted the sons of somebody rich from America, and they didn't give up, and they went searching. So she got caught because she kept records, and she kept mementos in the way of notes. And this stupid man comes out with the fact that he believes the notes are fake. Absolutely shocking. Anyway, he then goes on. The, the Manchester police manipulated the evidence. It must be a common practice for them to do that, he basically says. What is the evidence pointing to her? She's a scapegoat. This man is delusional. There are a lot of nurses questioning this. Well, I've not seen one nurse question it. It's normal behaviour for her to keep re take records home with her. Um, why would a nurse be taking records home with her? That's totally inappropriate, and that should be outside of guidelines. And if the, the hospital authorities should be looking into how this was occurred. Um, he says the media should have, should listen. She was cleared on some charges. Um, she, he, he goes on, and I've nearly finished. She didn't seem to have tripped herself up when she was arrested because they showed the video of her being arrested. They were trying to make her look dodgy. Well, that's because this woman was a child killer. Um you know, she suffered whole life, a whole life sentence. Well, that's because it was deserved. And finally, he adds, there isn't any evidence. I don't feel the need to explain it. You have people who become amateur psychiatrists, he says. These deaths are not murders. I'm not presuming that there's been a murder. It's just unbelievable. She shouldn't, she should be straight out. She should be straight out of prison, he adds. They've changed the data to suit them. It doesn't sound like there is anything to question, um, pointing to the woman. Her account signs accurate. Nothing suggests she's guilty. The media are calling us crazy for calling things out. Shouldn't they be doing the questioning things of 
the, the health authorities and the police. Now, this is utterly appalling and it must be stopped. People like this should not be allowed to go out there and come out with such utter gibberish and nonsense about such an evil serial killer. This makes me very, very angry. And I'm utterly appalled that those poor families are being made to suffer by these this sick nutcase. And he walks around as he's doing it with his dog and he's going walking around the farm. I don't know where he lives. He's going, I hear noises, and he's he's obviously completely mentally unhinged, but he's got hundreds and hundreds of followers. And that is that is what is most worrying about these people. They get carried away, and this social media has allowed these people to get carried away with all of these things because they talk utter drivel. There is no need for any more of this. The three holidays a year in Torquay with her parents, is that smothered? Not really. Three times a year on holiday for a couple of days. These parents, they are clearly delusional people, but seriously, how ridiculous. How utterly stupid. Anyway, that's enough of that, unless you have some questions for me on that topic. Um, we've only got two more topics to go, but um, um, and we're already at 41 minutes, so there's only 20 minutes of this left. David here has arrived, and David will be glad to hear I'll be shutting up in 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, hey, I'm all right. He's all right. Um, anyway, so the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was the an example of the media getting it wrong. So this morning, the Observer newspaper decided to write a story. Oh, that's you. Oh. Yeah, no, we don't need any sound in the background. We have Finn, Finn makes sound and uh, didn't like that. So anyway, David is here to moderate. Right. So he'll get rid of anybody who is being naughty. Um, so good evening to David. Mm -hmm. And anyway, the, 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 um, the, the Observer wrote an article this morning about a fire on a $30 million super yacht destroyed by a fire in Sydney. And they referred to it being owned by the Australian British businessman, Michael Hintz, who is actually Lord Hintz. He's a billionaire and a Conservative Party owner. Mr. Hintz actually, or Lord Hintz actually owns a very, very impressive yacht, but it's called the um, Andy Andiamo. Now, Mr. Hintz's yacht has not been burnt. Um, Mr. Hintz's yacht was built in Italy, in Bonetti. Um, it's got a, it takes 12 people. It has a crew of 15. It's a very beautiful yacht. Now, this man has been brought into a story, which is it's completely fake news, by The Guardian and The Observer, which one would think they would know better. But they reported that his yacht, which is a... Um, 195 foot long, 59 meter vessel was fully engulfed and burnt, and their article remains there. Equally, the Sydney Herald, um, they reported on this story, and they've had to apologize. They've they've apologized because the boat was actually owned by a man called. Um, um, Sandy Oakley, who is the also the owner of the Wild Oats um, vessel, which is a, a, a amazing boat that wins a lot of races. The uh, Hamilton Island is where they're based. Um, it's won nine times honours of the Sydney to Hobart yacht race. Anyway, it's a much smaller boat, boat that sank. Um, but again, you know, it just highlights the confusion of newspapers not actually bothering to report on stories correctly and this shows that it's not just you know the mail online who get things wrong with with their junior reporters you know the observer has made a huge error and they the the sydney herald um sydney morning herald sorry is the full name of it um have have apologized to uh, lord hints 
Um, an earlier version of this story incorrectly stated the yacht belonged to Michael Hintz. The Herald apologizes. Well, at least the Herald have apologized. I think the Observer could do better. It's very disappointing to see this kind of nonsense. But it does highlight also the confusion of people's yacht names because I was always told um, that yachts could only be have one name, but there's various yachts of the same name. So it's very easy to get confused here. Um, so there we go. You know, the um, Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell always, um, her brother always said the reason that they call their yacht the Lady Ghislaine, well, Robert Maxwell called it the Lady Ghislaine, was because he couldn't call it the Lady Elizabeth. Well, on that basis, he could have called it the Lady Elizabeth because there are multiple yachts called the Lady, the, the um, called Andy Armo. So, so Kevin Maxwell got it very wrong and just talked a load of nonsense as usual. So it's very interesting to me in that regard because it shows that the Maxwell family were talking more porky pies because it's multiple yachts. Um, the Italian people are paying for the upkeep of the sanctioned sailing yacht A. Well, um, I saw the sailing yacht A. Um, it's one of the most beautiful vessels on the planet. Um, I loved the sailing yacht A. Um, I wouldn't mind having that myself, but I don't think I could afford. Uh, I couldn't afford even to pay for the cleaning of uh, one room of it because it's so big. It's it's got two swimming pools and it's the most beautiful sailing yacht in the world, in my view. But um, there we go. So, yeah. So I thought it was interesting to talk about the error of, you know, a respectable newspaper. I suppose the the, the Observer. It's not just the Mail and the Sun that get things wrong. So, so Andy Armo is now at the bottom of the sea, uh, well, in the bottom of the dock um, in um, Sydney, and uh, there's nothing left of it. So it had been out earlier in the day with its owners on board. They're a family called the, the Oakleys, who I'm told are a very nice family. They did manage to save all the other boats that were near it by dragging them away. So thank goodness for that, and thank goodness nobody got hurt. There was a family who were getting married nearby, and their wedding was full full of smoke, which wasn't very pleasant for them. But um, one would have thought by now that the Observer, the Guardian, would have corrected its article, but of course they haven't, which I think is very bad. Anyway, we'll move on to another story now, the final story of the day, the latest in the Wagafa Christie case. So for those of you who don't know, the Wagafa Christie case involved um, two footballers' wives, commonly known as WAGs. So they, they, it means wives and girlfriends, for those of you not in the know. One is married to um, a man called um, Wayne Rooney. And Wayne, Wayne, um, Wayne Rooney... Um, was a Man United player, and he's he's been known for his sexual naughtiness and many other things. Um, there we go. Um, the other one was um, the wife of um, Jamie Rooney, another footballer. Now, this was a case that involved talking too much on social media, and they both got rather carried away. As um, as was described, one of them one of them basically um, well, I'll read what I'll read out the description here. In 2019, Colleen Rooney, the wife of footballer Wayne Rooney, suspected that posts from her private Instagram account were being leaked to the sun a British tabloid newspaper that regularly publishes celebrity stories. I don't like the word celebrity. That's a very tacky word. To determine the source of the stories, Rooney posted fabricated stories and restricted access to them to Rebecca Vardy, the wife of footballer Jamie Vardy, whom she, she suspected to be the source of the leaks. The Sun published these stories, which included claims that the basement of Rooney's house had flooded, that Rooney had visited Mexico to make a baby girl, and that Rooney had been a planned had planned to appear on Strictly Come Dancing. In late 2019, Rooney po posted on Twitter that Vardy had leaked the stories to the press. Rooney's tweet went viral and was dubbed Wagga for Christie, a portmanteau of the term wag 
an acronym of the wives and girlfriends of professional athletes. Um, and the name of Agatha Christie, a well-known writer of whodunit crime fiction. Well, I would call Agatha Christie a lot more distinguished things than that myself. I think Wikipedia should be upda updating its, its description. The term was originally coined on Twitter by writer and comedian Dan Atkinson, though misspelled as Wagatha. W-A-G-A-T-A-G-T-H-A. Vardy responded to Rooney on Twitter denying the claims and implying her Instagram account had been hacked. So um, Vardy sued um, Rooney for defamation and subsequently lost. Um, the case was later described as the most ill-advised defamation suit since Oscar Wilde's dispute with the Marquess of Queensbury. And that, you know, that ended up with a rather disastrous thing for Oscar Oscar Wilde and, you know, and his downfall and the downfall of a brilliant playwright and writer who ended up in jail and, you know, in Reading jail and his life ruined. And, you know, he ended up sent off to Paris and, and his children went to Switzerland and life went wrong. Now, um, Miss Vardy, it seems, doesn't want to let any of this go. So she, according to the Tortoise magazine, which is an online publication, which is chaired by Matthew Barzen, the um, former ambassador to Britain from America. Um, and it, it, it features, you know, I, I've talked about it before. I urge you all to read Tortoise. It's a great publication. Um, one of the best people writing for it is Paul Caverna Galizia. Um, he, he always says, Tortoise gives me... The, the time to report a story. You know, his mother was assassinated in Malta in a car bomb. He's been involved in exposing the story of Lebedev. Um, I have connections to both of those things. Um, uh, not the, the car bomb, but to Malta um, by my sister, who was married into the a family connected with Malta and their politics. And Malta is a country that... Um, could do with cleaning up its politics, from what I gather. And um, Paul Carvana Galicia has done a lot of work to try and get justice for his mother, who was only doing her job. And and then he helped, you know, Boris Johnson's dear friend, uh, Lord Lebedev of the Russian Federation, who he put into the House of Lords. Um, he's written a lot about that. And um, anyway... They reported today, Rebecca Vardy has set up a media representation company, Wagga for Christie, which is actually the full title of the company. If you go on companies' houses, Wagga for Christie International Limited. She is a sole director of the company. Um, in an attempt to recoup the £1.5 million she owes in legal costs following her libel claims. So it was interesting to see that in the tortoise today. Um, yes, she's rich, but she's got an empty life. I would say she's also very Im immature, Jack. Yes, very immature. Um, um, she is going to have um, a number of things connected with this company. She's registered for clothing, beauty products, jewellery, mugs. Well, she is a bit of a mug, let's be honest. You know, she's definitely um, one china pot short of a teapot, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, soft drinks. Um, and, um, you know, The Guardian wrote about her today and made fun of her. Oh, sorry, no, early, a couple of days ago. They um, they said, give it time before she has a cage fight like Elon Musk with Zuckerberg, you know, with what, what is she planning on doing? Um, this woman should just let it go. She should give up. You know, when you're in a hole, you should stop digging. Um, the paper, con the Guardian concluded, you know, don't say which one is Rebecca Vardy again. Well, this is a woman who went to court with, with David Sherborne, who is a very talented lawyer, who um, also was involved in the Johnny Depp case and also um, represented um, my old friend James Stunt and um, lots of different people. And uh, she was asked about Davy Jones's locker and she didn't know what that meant when she dropped her when her assistant, uh, her friend who was corresponding with her, dropped conveniently dropped her phone into the ocean. Um, these wags are so boring. Yes, quite right, Julie. 
they are ridiculous. But this is this woman has wasted one and a half million pounds on a court case, and now she's trying to do more about it. Um, um, you were a bit annoyed because you wanted to read more about Martin Branning, and you didn't get from Byline Times. Well, um, Byline Times, most of the articles on there are for free, so I don't know why you paid three pounds ninety five, but um, each to their own. But um, we're not interested to see if she's marketing soft drinks. Well. Um, would you want to drink a drink called Wagga for Christie? I don't think you would, but um, it may have poison in the bottle. You never know. You know, most things Wagga for Christie did involve a bit of poisoning and, you know, all sorts of curious deaths. So there we go. Um, the Byline Times expose on Lebedev and Boris Johnson was by um, Paul Kavana Galizia. And yes, you should definitely watch that. Um, I have already seen all of the, the things on that myself. Uh, put her on the Bibby Stockholm, yes. Uh, which one? Um, Vardy. I think Kaloon Rini, Kaloon Aruni, sorry, is, uh, um, she came out of it much better. Um, who's the plank of the week? Well, I think Rebecca Vardy should be walking the plank. She should be heading for Davy Jones's locker, shouldn't she, really? Um Yes, John Sweeney has done great work. John Sweeney is someone I know well. Um, he and I both have done a lot on the Ghislaine Maxwell story. Um, we spent time together at a crime conference last year, and um, I've kept in touch with him. He's mostly in Ukraine now, but he did a he does a wonderful series of podcasts, and he did one with Neil and Christine Hamilton the other day. Well, and I, well, I listened to the other day, and it was um, all about Fayed and all of that. And Mr. Fayed has died. And as Jonathan Aitken said, you know, we we wish the Fayed family condolences, but he was a bit of a weirdo. Um, that's what all I shall say about Mr. Fayed. Um, you love John Sweeney. Well, I think he's great too. And it was great that he he and Neil and Christine Hamilton could come together and have a bit of a laugh. Um, Yes, you want a plank of the week. Well, in my publication, we always have a moron of the moment and a wally of the week from time to time. So um, there you go. But um, I think we are coming towards the end of my time. Um, we've got three minutes left. So if you have some questions, your time is now. So let's have a few questions from you if you would like. Um, do you want a quiz, David? Yeah, I'm up for it. David would like a quiz. Well, David's going to monitor the quiz. Yes. Well, oh gosh. Well, uh, David better get a piece of paper. Yeah. Oh, to, yeah. to write the names. Um. Have you the Barbie? Um. You could, necessary. This one. Uh, you could write in my book. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. There's pens everywhere in this house. Yeah. Right. You'd like the legendary quiz. Well, we're going to have to get more quiz books eventually at this rate. You, you're going, yes, the quiz. Okay, the oh, the pen. Yeah, the pen. Okay, thank you. So you have to write their name down when they win. Uh, and then right. mark how many points they get. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. Let's find a, find a page. Right. Right. Are you all ready for the quiz? Yeah, let's go. Now you have to you have to get the full answer correct. I think that is correct. Izenkia, uh, Iz, sorry, um, has been done very well in this quiz thus far. Um, if you don't get the correct full answer, we will take the next correct full answer. So ready to go. Number one, which M is a country on the southern coastline of Africa that suffered devastating floods in February and March 2000? It was not Malta, it was not Morocco, and it was not Malaysia, it was not Madagascar, it wasn't Nigeria, because that doesn't begin with N. The winner is Evola's Sunglasses, for one point to Evola's Sunglasses, David. Evola gets one point. Question number two. In flower arranging, what O, and remember it's an O, um, so don't say Nigeria or Namibia because it's, it's definitely 
begins with an O. In flower arranging, what O is the trade name of a green block of light material used to hold cut flowers in place? Yes. The answer is Oasis, and the winner is yes. Isnekia. Yeah, last... You're very quick off. You're the quickest of the lot, Isnekia. You are very quick. Yeah. In the musical, West Side Story, was Bernardo the leader of the Jets or the Sharks? Uh, the first person to answer was Token Spirit with Sharks. Token Spirit gets the point. Oh, Token Spirit. In the human body, is the aorta the largest artery or the largest vein? The winner is... is um, Oh gosh, the winner is Pebble Dasher. One point to Pebble Dasher for question number four. Right, question five. Kathmandu is the capital of which country? Sally A wins with Nepal. Sally A. Right, question six. Does the island of Corfu lie in the Aegean or the Ionian Sea? Token spirit gets the point. The answer is Ionian. So token spirit is leading by one point. Token spirit is now into the lead. So um, by one point, token spirit leads. And who is coming second? Oh, second is like everybody. Evolve everybody out. else has got one point that has managed to get there. Right. Complete, question seven. Complete the title of this 1980s Oscar-winning film by the director Ingmar Bergman. Fanny and dot, 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 question mark. It wasn't Fanny and Johnny. It wasn't Fanny and Bryce. Token Spirit gets the point again. Alexander. Token Spirit is storming into the lead. And it was not Fanny in a rash. No. <laughs> uh, right. Question eight. Which French term, beginning with the letter C, is given to a road closed at one end? Question eight. The winner is Anna Perkins, cul-de-sac. And she also correctly hyphenated, which most of you are not doing. But um, I, I think we would have accepted it without the hyphenation. But there we are. Question nine. This is one for the animal lovers. In the animal kingdom, is the head of the male mallard dark black? Or dark green. Simon Coates gets green, but you should say dark green, but we will allow we Simon, will, to give in the point. Simon Coates gets the point because green we did we did say green green and black. So we we, we could be naming a brand of chocolate. My fr friend of mine who another anti Brexiteer founded so there we go um question 10 what was the first name of jenna the inventor of the smallpox vaccination the winner is hey tigers with edward question 11 in history the first Roman invasion of Britain took place in 55 BC under which military leader? No, it was not Hadrian. It was not William. It was not Nero. 
Um, I suppose we can accept the answer of TM divided TB Caesar. TM TB. Oh, yes, who right. says Caesar? TM divided by oh, no, no, we can't accept. Sorry, we, we cannot accept this, it says here. Um, do not accept just Caesar. So the winner is Sid Green with Caesar. Oh, okay. Sid, Sid Green. Green, I'm afraid that we had, this is the instructions of the book. Um, I'm not giving away all the answers, but um, there you go. We cannot accept just Caesar, I'm afraid. And it wasn't Margaret Thatcher, no. She was not around in 55 BC. Um, and nor, <laughs> and nor was Elvis, for oh, that matter. Scorpion. Or Philip Schofield. No, he he definitely wasn't around in 55 BC. Um, he might have liked to be around then because I'm um, sure he'd have enjoyed himself. But that's another matter. Question 12. In the USA, Independence Hall is a feature of which Pennsylvanian city? It wasn't you, Irish Fairy Tarot. No, you weren't... Philadelphia. Philadelphia, but you've spelt it incorrectly. So Token Spirit um, gets the point because uh, he spelt it correctly. Token Spirit is leading uh, by uh, quite four. a lot. Four to how many? Is there anyone else coming up close? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Token Spirit is at four, and oh, rest so of the rest the have only managed. At one. You've all got to catch up with the Token Spirit. The Token Spirit is very spirited in his clicking the answers here, you know. But um, yeah, he definitely is banking the most points. Um, yeah. um, you know, he is definitely not the weakest link currently. Yeah. Um, there we are. You know, we've got to see whether any of you can catch up. So we'll give you a little break for a moment here whilst I think of some of the phrases that Annie comes up with. Uh, no. It doesn't give away much of those. Right, question 13. Complete the, the, the line of this nursery rhyme. Little Miss Muffet... 13, and we have to have the correct answer. The winner is Doc Martens, sat on her tuffet, on, on a tuffet, yes. Um, the correct answer is sat on a tuffet, but we can accept her tuffet, yes. So you win, um, Doc Martens. The next question, question 14, which poet wrote the poem, The Fairy Queen, published in 1590, Spencer or Coleridge? The answer has been won by Pebble Dasher, Spencer. Oh. Pebble Dasher wins the point. The next question. Question 15, an easy one. Um, who directed the film Star Wars? Oh, that's an easy one. Um, we have to the full name. So Pebble Dasher gets the point. George Lucas. The competition is rising now. The competition is rising. Well, where, where do we stand, David? Uh, token Spirit is at four. Pebble Dash is at three. That's everybody again. It's the a battle between to Token Spirit and Pebble Dasher now. Some of you are too fast for the phone. Well, there we go. Um, I can't do anything of that. Now, this is a question about somebody who I really dislike because they chained somebody who was a friend of mine to a radiator and was sent to prison. That gives you a clue. Um, any of you that know anything about me will have known that I have called out this person repeatedly. 
In pop music, which band released the 1980s hit Karma Chameleon? Um, it's got to be the name of the band, not the person that we're talking about here. So, band. So, the first person to get it correct was... Because most of you are using the name of the individual. The winner is Paulie, who gets Culture Club. Of course, the musician is Boy George who is someone I have no liking for. A very nasty piece of toe rag. There we go. Question 17. In nature, do butterflies usually rest with their wings vertical or horizontal? Uh, Martin, it's not closed, because that wasn't an op option. The winner is um, Melissa Neal with vertical. Nikki is complaining she needs decent Wi-Fi. She's two answers behind. I do apologize, Nikki, but I cannot help your Wi-Fi. Um, your Wi-Fi is clearly the link is weakest link, and you should have it closed down. Perhaps you should go to a different provider. Others are available. Um, question 18. What S is the process of extracting metal from its ore by heating? The winner is Pebble Dasher with smelting. Oh, it's a tide now. It's now a tide first. Token spirit and pebble dasher is at four. Token spirit and pebble dasher both for each out of 18. So they account for eight out of the 18 questions. And another 10 of you have managed to beat them. And you're doing rather well to get one each. It sounds like a two-horse race. Well, often a two-horse race can involve a horse coming from the back and winning. I, I've, I once had a 22-what-to-one winner in such a race. So come on to the rest of you. Uh, we, anything could happen. You've still got two questions to go. But it looks like one of those will probably win. Um, but we may have to do further questions if we go into a tiebreaker. It's tiebreaker Which British military unit, known by a three-letter abbreviation, was founded by David Sterling in 1941? The winner is Simon Coates with SAS. SAS? Yes. Well, the Special Air Service. So Simon Coates gets the point. Well, Simon is at two now. Simon is now at two. Simon holds the key to the next stage, perhaps. Now, if one of the, the two get this, one of them wins. If they don't, we have to continue to further questions. Right, question number 20. In which English county might you visit Earth Station Goonhilly? It is not in Kent. It is not in Hertfordshire. Dean Kent gets the point with Cornwall. Uh, so now we have to continue to further questions. Still a tiebreaker. Four, four, four. But if one of them gets the, we will stop when one of them gets, one of them gets a point, I guess, unless somebody else comes to the, well, I suppose we should just do another 20. Yeah, why not? We'll do another 20 questions. And it gives all you, the, the, then that is the end. Then I post the results. Sorry? No, I said I will post the results. You'll post the results. Yeah. Right. We're going to choose a random page. So you are all within a chance of winning if you can be quick. Right. This is an easy question. If you paid, a, if you paid, if you paid attention to the last question. Oh, one more tab. I've got an emergency door. Can you just write it down? Denise? Oh, others oh, then. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, we're going to take a pause because David has to has to um, 
an emergency call. He has an emergency call, but he will be back in one moment, he says. So, yes, have another whiskey. It's not whiskey, it was white wine, but I, I'm now going to have a glass of red wine. As for boy George, a very nasty man who did very bad things to a dear friend of mine, who he chained to a radiator and he was sent to prison for doing that too. That was a very nasty thing to do. And um, this person will, you know, doesn't think it acceptable that, um, has the tackle arrived? I don't know what the tackle is, but um, there we are. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed our discussions of other matters um, this evening. And um, I hope you will all get to read some of the books and watch the program I recommended. Um, there we go. Um, you're slow at typing. You enjoyed the live. Um, sensible discussions. Well, um, can I do twice this week? Um, at the moment, I've done every day, but I will be. Um, I will be limiting the number of days. I will wish Miss Fortune a happy birthday. Um, happy birthday to Miss Fortune. Um, yes, he did go to prison, boy George, and well done. Uh, you have to go, Nicola. Well, thank you uh, for your support. Um, um, Miss Fortune deserves a birthday. Bog off. Well, I think that would be a bit unkind. Yes, I'm glad we're all wishing Miss Fortune a happy birthday. Fantastic to wish somebody a happy birthday. And I hope you've had drinks galore because it sounds like you already have. Um, you're watching in the woman in the wall also. Worth watching. Yes, wonderful. You'd like twice a week quiz. Well, I didn't hear... Lady Colin Campbell talking about Marissa Masters. I don't know why would she talk about Marissa. Um, that's a very bizarre topic. Um, Marissa was a delightful lady who lived in Knightsbridge. And um, I don't know why Lady Colin Campbell would be talking about her because Marissa has, was buried um, several years ago and she was a, a lovely lady. And um, I don't know what that's got to do with Lady Colin Campbell, but um, there we go. Um, David should be back shortly, yeah, so we, we, then we can continue our quiz, yes. Um, the quiz will not go on for four hours, though, you know, that would not be possible. Um, I don't know who was a voodoo witch, but... Um, that is not a very nice thing to say about anybody. Right, David has returned, so we will recommence our quiz. But I will I would be interested to know what was said about Marissa Masters because I'm still in touch with her lovely daughters, a great family, and um, there we go. So the quiz, well, the quiz could not could be concluded because there are two people on four and there are other people who are on two. So we're going to do another 20 questions and let's see if we can get towards a winner by the time of the next 20 questions. Can we do a quiz maybe? Well, we've already done half of it, so you've still got chance. Good evening, Tranta Lee. We always welcome you. You're a lovely gentleman. And right, so the next question, if you paid attention to the last question, the answer is the same. Now that gives you a little clue. So this will this will weed out the pathetic from the pay attentions. So I'm trying to sound like Anne Robinson, but I'm not doing very well at it. Right. Poldark Mine is a tourist attraction in which English county? 
And I can only take the answers that begin after William Park because um, we hadn't start, uh, finished the question. Marcia Toms gets the point with with Cornwall. Um, so there we are. Question two. What's her name? Marcia. Marcia Park. Okay. The fastest thing finger first. Yes, busted one. You're right. Got to be the first. It wasn't the prisoner. I don't know. We were still going on the old questions, some of you. I think some of you are catching up. Right. Question two. This is part two. of Question two, part two. Was the religious movement Confucianism founded before or after Christianity? Well... Right. The winner is Evola's sunglasses. Oh, Evola with before. Three. Evola now has two points. She's joined the the the, the, the second league. So the competition has been ah. which which actor, question three, dressed up as the character Dorothy Michaels in the nineteen eighty-two film Tootsie. It wasn't Robin Williams. The answer is Misty Meadows gets the point with Dustin Hoffman. Question four. In physics, which is a is lighter, a proton or an electron? No, you're wrong, David. It's a proton. Seriously? All right. And the winner is Pebble, Pebble Dasher. Oh my God, Pebble is leading now. Pebble has five. Pebble is winning. Pebble has five now. Pebble has gone into the lead. Question six. What is the name? Now, this is a question dear to me because it's one of our favorite programs on this, this whole, amongst many of you. Um, I, I, have, I used to drink vodka shots with the person concerned. Um, and uh, and her late partner, friend. And um, what is the name of the character played by Patricia Routledge in the television series Keeping Up Appearances? And we can't accept, we, can, we have to have the full name, so Eisnekia gets the point. Hyacinth Bouquet, or Hyacinth Buckets is her real name. The Lady of the House speaking, and uh, what a wonderful series, and how shameful that the BBC have cancelled it. The executive that did that should be oh should be God. shot. They should bring it back. The competition Absolutely. is getting tougher now. Now the competition is getting tougher. But Pebble is leading with five points. Pebble has five points. Uh, Token Spirit has four points. Token Spirit has four points. Uh, Evora Sunglass has two points. Uh, is I can't pronounce any. She has two points. Simon Coates has two points. A so, multiple two points as well. Yeah, so, so three two points. Yes, so it's all in it to win it. Yeah. Question seven. In literature, complete the title of this 1945 novel by the French author Jean-Paul Sartre, The Age of dot, 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 what? It was not innocence. The winner is um, Anne Perkins with oh. a reason. Oh, the Anna Perkins. Oh, the third place has four contestants now, like four people now. Third place has four contestants at the moment. So you're going up, all of you. Yeah. Right, question nine. Complete the next line of this nursery rhyme. Jack and Jill went up the hill, and we need the entire quote. Um, Eisnekia gets it completely correct, so she gets the point. Oh to gosh. fetch a pail of water. Question 10. Is the chemical element silicon represented by the symbol SI with a lowercase i or SI with a... or SL, I think is what they're trying to say here. It's 
very badly printed. The winner is Simon Coates with SI. S lowercase i. Oh. Oh, competition has increased now. Right, that's all. You're all with it. There's only like two people at the third position now. Two in the third position. Yeah. Right, it's question. Simia and Simon Coates. Okay. Question 11. What L are the leather shorts traditionally worn in Austria? Um, Isenkia gets the uh, doesn't spell it correctly, but we can give that later It's it's uh, it doesn't need the I in it, but most of you are spelling it with the I, so yeah, I think it gets, but this is a quiz online, so I can accept that on this occasion, yeah. So, in pop music, question 12. What is the first name of Scary Spice? And we will accept the abbreviation. Right, Pebble Dasher wins with Mel. It was Melanie. Melanie um, is her full name, but Mel is her Melanie B. Six points. Pebble now goes in back into the lead with six points. They're out of. He's out of the game. Yes. Right, question 14. In the House of Commons, who became the father of the house, i.e. the oldest person, the oldest MP in the house, in 1992? And we need his full name. The speaker is not his full name. No, we need his full name. It wasn't Skinner, it wasn't Peter Bottomley, it wasn't Tony. Pip Field wins with Edward Heath. We would have accepted Ted Heath, but um, not just Heath. And it wasn't George Galloway, and it wasn't Harold Wilson, it wasn't Kenneth Clark in 1992. Kenneth Clark was Chancellor of the Exchequer at that point. So and it certainly wasn't Lord Palmerston because he was dead. So that couldn't be possible. So <laughs> some of your answers. Pitt the Elder, well, he was dead a long, long time ago. And it wasn't Busted. I believe they were a pop band. And it wasn't Boris, no. There we are. Question 15. In sport, what nationality are the team tennis players, sorry, Venus and Serena Williams? The winner is Pebble Dasher with American. Question 16. Was the classical composer Ralph Vaughan Williams born in England or Wales? The winner is Eidsnekia with England. Question 17. In transport, what type of vehicle is a frigate? And we'll accept various descriptions of this. It was not a train or a bus. Um, it, it was a boat. So, yes, the person that said boat was... No, boat was Pebble Dasher was the first to say. We'll accept boat. It could have been ship, warship. Yeah. or escort vessel either, but boat um, Pebble Dasher wins the point. Question 18. In literature, in which country is James Clavell's novel Shogun set? The winner is um, Pebble Dasher with USA. Uh, oh, American, no, no, no. America would have been another acceptable answer, of course. I'm oh, sorry. No, no, I'm completely wrong. I've got the wrong. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, I have totally misread it. The winner is Meridian with Japan. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I was looking at the previous answer. That was terribly bad of me. Uh, I do apologize. Uh, Meridian. Meridian gets a point. 
Right. Yes. Shogun, of course, would be Japanese. It's not American. That's the very silly. I, I was looking at the wrong previous answer. Right. Question 19. You've only got two to go. In maths, what is 25% of 200? Easy. Simon Coates gets the point with 50. And the final, very final question of the 40 questions we've asked you. I don't know why William Park asks, keeps asking how about we do a quiz. You've already been party to it, so you, I don't know why you keep asking. The final question is, which of the Queen's country residences lies on the River D? The winner is Isnekia with Balmoral. Oh, hey, that's the end of the quiz. This is the end of our quiz. So, uh, winner, winner is Pebble Dasher. Pebble Dasher. The winner is Pebble Dasher, David tells me. And how yeah. many points did Pebble yeah. Dasher? Eight points. I, who got eight points out of 40? And the second prize goes to Is Isnegia. Is Nekia comes second with six points. With six points. And third prize goes to oh, the two people, Token Spirits and Simon Coates. Uh, Token Spirits and Simon Coates come joint third. So well done to you all. I don't know. We will not be doing a quiz again for a while, but um, we've been now going for one hour and thirty-two minutes. So. Thank you to you all. Um, you want to win a holiday to Bognor Regis? Well, that would be perhaps a fate worse than death to some people, but it might be a delight to others. Um, well done to you all, and uh, thank you for participating. I didn't anticipate doing a quiz. And um, yes, well, thank you all for a jolly good evening. and. Um, um, Pebble Dasher is not related to me. No, I don't know Pebble Dasher. Don't never met him. Paulie likes a bit of bully. Well, yes, I did know um, the wonderful presenter, and uh, he was a wonderful gentleman. And I loved Bullseye and um, great thing. And I used to have a darts board uh, somewhere else at the moment, but um, I don't have one here in this house. But uh, Great fun, isn't it? A bit of darts. So thank you to David. Yes, David was a good quiz um, assistant. He doesn't quite look like Debbie McGee, but there we go. Um, we will return again tomorrow, but um, I will not be returning every night um, henceforth, but um, we will figure out how this is done because um, moving into the away from the silly season there are things to be done of an evening but um there will be no more quizzes for a few days but uh thank you very much have a lovely evening and good night to you all and good gardening and uh thank you all for your lovely participation and have sleep well and don't have nightmares as they say on crane watch you know after talking about such terrible things and such wonderful things but good night to you all pip pip